Mike Scott, what, what's your best and worst moments in a Cheltenham Town shirt? Uh, I think my worst moment probably came after the Milton Keynes Duns game in the cup. Um, I remember just just going in the, in the on the read your paper and, and the morning after, and I just felt like crap. <laughs> to be honest, sorry, can't really say. I felt right. rubbish, but um, I think that was one of my worst because obviously it was made clear that the club were after a goalkeeper, um, and I, I should have saved the goals just before our time, which ended up being costly. But I remember feeling pretty rubbish that day, uh, and I think probably my debut was was probably the best moment because once you've made that, then you can't take that away from you. Yeah. Okay. What's the funniest thing shouted at you from a Cheltenham fan or any other from the, the terraces or stands? Uh, I always get the one shoot every time I take a goal kick. Um, uh, I can't really remember one. I, mean, one, I remember a couple from an away fans like um, I've slept with your mum, I've slept with your sister, and, and things like that, which you just laugh it off and things yeah. like that. But Wes, I used to say the best one. He said uh, if, like, when he was playing, people used to say to him. Oh, Whereas you're having a shocker anyway. You think you think this is a shocker I've had worse or something like that, so I think that's always a good reply. Yeah, okay. Um do you predict automatic promotion in playoffs or stay down this season? Uh any promotion of sort, however it comes would be nice. Yeah, okay. What's your best ever save? Uh I think my one uh, against Wickham away in the Johnston's paint trophy was although it weren't really very important um, I thought I was going to say I was going one way and then managed to, to get back and, and save it the other way so I was quite pleased with that yeah. but in terms of importance probably a couple at Torquay was, was quite good Yeah. Okay. Who or what has been instrumental in your improvements um, is it down to experience or Steve Book's dodgy coaching? <laughs> I think Bucky's been he's been brilliant for me. I mean, he, he comes in and he's always got a smile on his face and um, he just wants to work hard. And he's he's not just a goalkeeper coach, so he, he helps out with the outfield players as well. And he's just a, a pleasure to be around and, and I've really enjoyed working with him and things like that. So he's he's been brilliant for me, brilliant for Connor. And I think if you ask the lads, who's probably been the most improved player since the start of the season, it would be Connor because he's come on leaps and bounds and, and he's got a great future ahead of him. Okay. How did you feel deep down when Jack Button came in? Obviously, I was I was gutted, like because I think I played hundred and whatever games in a row, and sort of things. If, you, if you're playing well, if you're not playing well and you're left out of the team, you can take it. But I thought I was doing all right, and and then to be left out of the team was disappointing. But obviously, it's some t- it's going to happen again. I'm going to be in in a team and then get left out. It's it's just part and parcel of football. So uh, you just take it on the chin and and keep working hard in the training ground and try and take your chance when it comes around again. But Jack was Jack was brilliant. He's he's a great lad, and I still speak to him now. And he's obviously he's not got much of a future out of him, has he? So uh, yeah, like I say, I, I, he was great to work with and really enjoyed it. Yep. Okay. Any tips for next week festival? Yeah, don't follow me. <laughs> <laughs> I've done I've done the favourite in the first already, and that's that's all I've done right. so far. Okay. Do, do you feel you shout for the ball enough, and is that the part of your game you think it's improved recently? I think it, I think I could talk more. I mean, I, sp- I spoke to Benno about Neil Sullivan on Saturday, and I mean he's been in the game 20, 23, 25 years, and just to to see him the way he organises the back four was brilliant. And uh, I think it's something I have improved on, but it's something that I can I can still uh, work on definitely. Yeah. Okay. Um, who was your hero growing up, and who do you model your game on now? Um, my hero growing up, because I'm obviously a big Wolves fan, uh, was Mike Stow. He was, he was the goalie at Wolves, testimony. I think he played over 500 games and everything. He was brilliant. And I ended up, it's weird because I ended up being really good friends with him and living with him when I went to Bristol City and his family. And he had a massive influence on my career and um, he, was, he was my hero then. Uh, now I, I just like to watch all sorts of goalkeepers and, uh, and just try and pick up any little bits that I can. I mean, like I say about Neil Sullivan, that if you, he must be great for, for defenders because he just talks and talks and, and things like that, so he, he's brilliant. OK. Uh, Marlon Pack wants to know are you sponsored by Tom's shoes or if not why do you keep wearing them <laughs> they're, just, uh, they're very comfortable I think he's just jealous because I've got all the Tom I think I've got every collection every colour in every collection but um, he can if his missus lets him go to Marbella he, cause he's not allowed to come at the minute so if his missus lets him go to Marbella I'm sure I'll have a pair on Okay. Um, Jack Butlins did well here and played for England. Do you think your form here now means you can get in the England squad? <laughs> Maybe the England non-league squad. That's about it. I think. Right. Uh, who, who would you say is your best mate at Cheltenham Town? Uh, probably, it's probably the car school three. Yeah. I mean, has Penner and Lowy. I've known known Lowy since um, since I was in the youth team at Wolves since I was about ten or eleven. But uh, I get on really well with him and, and has. And, but I get on probably 
best with Penner because we, we like the same things and we support the same team and things like that. And like I say, I've got got the summer with him in my bear as well, so I look yep. forward to that. Okay. And more about the car score later. But do, do you read the Robin's Nest forum? I don't know. Um, some of the lads do, but I don't. Right. Does uh, Adebayo Akinfenwa have you waking up in a cold sweat? Oh, my mates when we play Northampton always have him to score. Because <laughs> I think I don't think there's ever been a game, even in the reserves, that he hasn't scored past me. And, uh, but he, he's an absolute nightmare to play against him. He's so strong, and um, I, th- I can't believe he doesn't start every game for Northampton because he's, he just gets you goals, guaranteed goals. And, and people might think he's he's not a nice guy, but he's actually a, he's one of the nicest guys. If he if he pushes you, he'll say sorry straight away and, and things like that. He's a lovely guy. Yeah. Um, we heard about Russ Penn's press ups last week. Is, is there anything you do before a game specifically to prepare, prepare that's a bit unusual, or have you got a routine? Um, I like fish the night before a game, and then I always put my left glove on once, take it off, and then put my left glove on again, and then my right glove. It's a bit weird. Why did uh, you start doing that? For any particular reason? I don't know. I just did it, and I think I was in a right one game, and I just kept doing it. I always put my towel in the right hand side of the goal, um, and I like. This is going to sound like I'm a right weird. I, I like my bottles when in the warm up both facing the same way so that everything's in line. Yeah, okay. Are you laughing um, at that? <laughs> what's the one thing Charlton fans could do to help you and your teammates win against Chesterfield on Tuesday night? Uh, just, just the same as normal, just get, make as much noise as possible and, um, and get behind the lads like they always do. I mean, obviously, I'm sure some will be staying away because of a certain game on telly, but um, like I say, the more the, the more the merrier and hopefully we appreciate every support support that comes down and, and pays the money to see us and hopefully we can put something on to entertain them OK um, who has the most banter in the dressing room uh, t- t- I like I get on with, I like Stevie and he's my sort of like you could spend all day with him and, and have a good day and that and yeah I like Stevie Elliot yeah, OK uh, what's your perfect Sunday <laughs> who's that from somebody who <laughs> always gets asked from, uh, uh, my perfect Sunday if we've not if we've done all right we've, and we might have Monday off, I like I like going out for lunch with the family and watching the football in the pub. Yeah, okay. Was the, the that's only if we've not got a game Tuesday and we're doing all right. Yeah, we're off Monday. obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Was the Norburn's goal for Rovers the best scored against you this season? Yeah, definitely. I think. Like, I remember he hit it, and when he lined up, I thought, "Go on and shoot." And he's hit it, and I thought I had it, and he just kept going and going further away from me. So, uh, John Ward said to me after the game, he just chatting to me, and don't go for those brownie. I was like, oh, cheers, you, just just what you want to hear after you've let in the ninety minutes minute goal. But uh, yeah, the, obviously he's doing a great job down there. Fair play to. Yeah. Um, are you happy with the back four uh, lately? And is there anything specifically that you'd like to see him do to improve? Uh, I think, like I say, they've been absolutely brilliant. Um, the last couple of games we look really solid. Uh, just a few more clean sheets, but that's not just the back four. That's a, a team, yeah. a team thing. And Hector's come in from Reading. He's been he's been unbelievable, and he's got a, a massive future ahead of him. Yeah. Okay. What's your dog's name, and does he know any tricks? Uh, my dog's name is Dexter, and he's very fat at the moment. He keep feeding him too much bread and chocolate. Um, yeah, he's he's a bit of a fatty at the minute, so we need to put him on a diet. Yeah. His trick, he just he does the paw and keeps kissing me and licking me. So. <laughs> who has the worst dress sense at Cheltenham Town? Uh, Penner definitely has got the worst dress sense, and you see him this morning coming in his tracksuit. It's faded, Nike tracksuit. Wears it every day. I think he wore it yesterday, and he just puts it on because it's the first thing that he sees in the morning. Okay. Who, who's the best centre back partnership you've ever played behind? Uh, probably Stevie and Benno. I thought they were brilliant together, especially last season. They were so solid and commanding, and again this season they were as well so probably Stevie and Benno okay. do you ever give Steve Book advice in training? <laughs> no I just do what I'm told <laughs> yeah. um, do you see yourself committing your future to Cheltenham or do you, do you still would like to move elsewhere you've got aspirations to play I, elsewhere? it's not even something I'm just, um, I'm just concentrating on staying in, in Cheltenham's team rather than thinking about getting in anyone else's and if you think too far ahead then that's when you get problems and I'm just hopefully playing tomorrow night and then if I go right tomorrow night hopefully play on Saturday as well yeah. there was reported interest in Portsmouth a couple of years ago when their goalkeeper coach was definitely coming to watch yeah. so was that something that you were aware of yeah really definitely watching? I mean um, I think a lot more was made of it than what it should have been uh, just because people come and watch you all the time but um, I think the manager at the time wanted to make more of a deal of it than, than what they should have been I mean 
people come and watch you all the time, and different goalkeeping coaches come and watch you at different times of the season and things like that. So um, it's just part and parcel of football. But um, obviously, I was, I was flattered by the interest, and I think it did get to me a little bit being a young lad and just coming the team and things like that. So, uh, but that's something I've learned from, and it's, it's just part and parcel of football. Yeah, okay, just a couple more. Um, were you more excited or nervous before the Spurs away game at White Hart Lane? Uh, a bit of both. I mean, it was just great. To, I didn't touch the ball for about 20 minutes, like properly with my hands, just a couple of goal kicks. I was thinking, you just want a nice touch to to relax you. And I think my first touch was picking the ball out of the net. But it was it was great to see so many fans there, and it was great for you, your family and everyone to come down. So it was um, it was a great day, and hopefully we did everyone proud. Okay. Um, if you could bring one player back to Cheltenham from your time here, who would it be? Um, Steve Gillespie, I think. Uh, he was absolutely brilliant when he was here. His movement was unbelievable. And, uh, it was good to see him last week at Fleetwood, but I thought he was he was brilliant. And or, or Ben Burgess, I thought he was brilliant as well. Yep. Okay. Last one. Um, what do you talk about on the way in the car school? And does anyone <laughs> annoy you early in the mornings? Uh, no, we're we're all pretty similar. We're all quite quiet in the morning, and then we usually have a moan about everyone on the way back. A bit, we were like women sometimes moaning about everything and bitching, but uh, it's, it's a good car school. And, um, yeah, even though Has needs to buy a new car with the money that he's on, he could buy an X5. <laughs> but he's, he just got out there, it's like everyone's got tendonitis in his knees because his car's that small. So he can afford a new one, but he's, he's not quite got one yet. Right. Brilliant. Cheers, Cheers Brandy. No